2013 Nissan Rogue. AC issues. The clutch will not engage. Uh, by Nissan's standard, this is called a manual AC system. Uh, I don't see the word manual as being relevant here. Uh, in order for that clutch to engage, four control units have to um, talk and agree before it comes on. So simply pushing that AC button and the little light coming on does not mean that that clutch is going to come on. And that is what confused the guy at the shop when this car was in. The guy that was working on this car is, is pretty savvy with a meter. He understands DC electricity real well and he understands voltage drop. And he was back probing the signals from the BCM, pushing that switch. The signals were not pulling the ground, so he thought that control head was bad. Uh, he did not realize that that control head is basically another computer. And the golden rule for computers are powers, grounds, garbage in, garbage out. Forgot the golden rule. Um, I found out later that there was a abandoned car on our lot, so a lot of parts got swapped around. You'll kind of see that in the video. But I felt like that uh, I should make a video on this because there was one key aspect that was overlooked, and uh, I'm going to try to uh, expose it a little bit so no one else uh, makes the mistake. Um, I've already gotten with the tech at the shop. He totally understands where the the manual part was very misleading but he also f kind of forgot the golden rule so it is what it is the car is fixed now and um we all kind of learned something um i had a subscriber hit me up about auto nerds uh you know there's a link in the description box if you need anything uh he was asking me about international shipping um i think the website <clears throat> Uh, and when I mean international, Auto Nerds is in the USA. Uh, if you go to the website and you try to get a quote to get a scope shipped out of the country, uh, I don't think the website will do that. Um, you have to contact them via email or they have an 800 number and they will be able to put you a quote together if you live outside of the US. I don't know if that applies to Canada. Uh, something you may have to research on your own but uh, you know who you are out there and i hope they got your quote and i hope you got yourself a new scope coming uh, uh feel free to hit me up and let me know how that worked out so the video is going to be more about description of how this manual ac system works um i don't really call it a manual system there are no cables uh, but Nissan considers it manual, so that's what we have to go by. Uh, 13 Rogue, this is not the only car that uses this system. So this information will apply to a lot of different Nissans with the uh, manual system. So enjoy the video, and thank you guys for liking and subscribing, and have a good one. All right, it's Monday. I've got a 13 Rogue here. Uh, was waiting for me and as you can see it was completely disassembled this is the way I found this car I've got a BCM here that I'm not sure is original I've got a BCM here that uh, I'm not sure what came out of I've got an extra switch panel I've got two extra switch panels and a bunch of a whole bunch of stuff disassembled um, like I said this is kind of the way I found this car and uh, I'm gonna attempt to fix it the main problem with it is the AC does not work. Seems like a lot. Uh, and also the compressor looks brand new under the hood. So this is a manual AC system. It's really, to me, not that complicated, but uh, um, others may differ. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna look at a few things with consult. I'm under engine and I'm looking at a couple of inputs uh, 1.65 volts that tells me there's about a hundred psi of pressure in the system if that's reading right uh, I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt right now um, so basically in a nutshell this controller is called the AC auto amp which you do not see it on that screen 
as you want things here the AC auto amp gets inputs and outputs so right there I want low fan and you can see on the BCM it's going from on to off the AC can uh, is what I want but you can see here it's not switching there's a pulse width signal that is put out from the BCM to this control head if this control heads happy with its inputs then it's going to ground that signal to the BCM the BCM is going to ask for it from the ECM and then of course your engine controller is going to look at things like coolant temperature engine load um, the AC pressure sensor then it's going to decide if it's okay and then if it's okay then it's going to tell the IPDM to turn it on well I have this on I've got to make sure this little control head right here has got all of its powers grounds and inputs so it will pass the signal information along to the BCM so I've got to start here first and there's one main input that I'm interested in other than powers and grounds and that is there's a sensor that reads the evaporator temperature in here and if it's something's wrong with it if it's reading too cold open it will not allow this request to go through and I think that's what's wrong with this car and unfortunately I think whoever's been working on it did not understand this how the system works and um, uh, tried to put a whole bunch of parts on it so uh, I will bring you in on some of the Pico stuff and some of the findings and if this is if it turns out that this signal here is no good on this thermo sensor I'm gonna put a resistor just to kind of fool it for now and uh, see if I can get the system working but uh, hopefully it'll do that and um, it'll be pretty cool tune in all right I'm back probed at the BCM and, and I'll go over the wiring diagram um, like I always do but basically I'm back probed at the BCM and I'm looking for two signals I'm looking for the fan signal here and I'm looking for this signal here now where the confusion is just because I push this button uh, let me focus you on the scope screen okay hopefully this is coming out all right so you see the red trace drop to ground that's me turning the fan on okay if this system were happy when I push the AC on which I'm gonna push right now the blue would drop to ground but it's not this control unit is not going to ground this signal unless all of its inputs are satisfied this controller works just like any other control unit in order to get a desired output you've got to have a good input and right now I believe that the intake temp sensor basically it monitors the evap temperature I believe that reading is off and it is not grounding this signal no matter how much I push this button right here that's what I want but that doesn't necessarily mean that's what I get because this guy's not happy so I'll bring you back when I test this uh, signal okay so here's the wiring diagram of the system we're working on okay AC auto amp or AC amp that is the control unit that basically is built to the buttons and knobs that you turn it's this one right here so if we look through here no I want you to notice a couple of things all right so we have power power and a ground all standard control unit stuff uh, there's the blower motor and even the blower motor control is not manual this AC amp is gonna send a signal and it's a um, it's a duty signal and then this little solid state device is going to decide how much ground to apply okay so even this little guy right here if you were diagnosing this has powers grounds and signals all right so here's the ac compressor clutch well you can see it is attached to the ipdm and not this so how does that all work well we're going to look at it ac pressure sensor uh, you'll see that in some scan data it talks to the ECM 
there's the body controller we'll see you've probably seen that in the scan data the only network that this ac amp is connected to is its own little network for the mode doors you know your face feet defrost you know your hot cold and your fresh air and then you've got this lowly little input over here that's the key to the to the uh, that's the secret ingredient so this control unit does not show up on consult well why well it can't it has it's not connected to the can network and there's no k line so the only way to check inputs and outputs of this is to actually expose it and check it what my guy thought is when he pushed that button it was automatically going to turn this compressor on well it does not you'll see in the scope captures i'm checking signals here uh 28 one of these is the fan the knob that turns the fan on and one is the ac switch well in the first capture i'm going to show you i am pushing the ac switch like crazy and you'll see it's not dropping to ground why isn't it dropping to ground right there if you've got a faulty input you're not going to get the desired output so if this system works you push all the buttons it talks to this this puts the information on can the ecm has a, uh, a hand in it the ipdm has a hand in it, and ultimately the ipdm just grounds the compressor um, so let me go ahead and show you the pico captures i'm back probed here and here and i've also checked here and here and then you're going to see a couple of voltmeter captures they're pictures basically and when you see those i'm back probed here and this is pretty much just a standard uh, coolant temp sensor it works the same way it this puts out 10 volts and depending on the resistance of how cold or hot the evaporator is um, it changes resistance which changes the voltage here to let the ac auto amp know if the evaporator is getting too cold uh, this is basically for freeze protection um, this sensor actually mounts in the fins of the evaporator and without that this manual ac system will not work so there again the word manual um, this little network here is a LIN network. Um, I have a video on decoding this. Maybe not on this particular car, but uh, it's kind of a neat little network right there. Um, but that's a little off subject. So let me show you the Pico capture real quick. So it's just a standard little signal. Basically, the BCM, all a BCM does is put out a bunch of power and it's looking for grounds. Um, whether it's a straight five volts it's a pulse signal it, it, it's putting out powers looking for grounds i will tell you that the service manual i think on the fan signal shows a sawtooth pattern and it's wrong because that's obviously not a sawtooth pattern so um be careful what the manual tells you so right in here the red trace is the fan switch when i turn the fan switch on it goes to ground when i turn it off it loses its ground well all through here i'm pushing the ac button the little light comes on but obviously it's not grounding because of the golden rule bad input um and after i've got it fixed what i've done is i've and you'll see in the video i've substituted a little variable resistor in there just to kind of fool um, to prove out the diagnosis and when i did i've got this signal so my fan switch turns on and then with the variable resistor in the harness i turn the ac switch on and it grounds it and then right in here the ac clutch engages so it's this case study is really not about the pico captures in itself but it's how the system works and to reinforce the golden rule no matter what control unit I don't care if it's an engine transmission uh, a telematics controller power ground and good inputs i don't care if the manual says it, the service manual says it is manual ac 
you can see by this diagram, pushing the button here, there's no way, shape, or form you are manually connected to that. There's a lot of decision making that has to go on before that comes on. And like I said, this little $40 part right here got overlooked. And, you know, it is what it is. You take your lumps and you move on. Putting this video out so you guys hopefully don't take too many lumps if you're dealing with this system. So I'm going to put up a couple of more videos of in the car and uh, it'll walk through me fixing the car, me experimenting. And then when you see the little voltmeter pictures, basically I'm showing you the voltage as I'm back probed here with the bad sensor versus the new sensor. And then uh, at the end, I show you some scan data, what it looks like. Uh, you only see BCM, you only see IPDM, and you only see ECM on the scan data because this guy right here has no way of communicating. So its only form of communicating is these two wires. And if this input's no good, well, you see what happened. So I'm going to get out of your ear now. Uh, thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of the video. Right, so real quick, I took a adjustable resistor and I put in the harness and basically I'm fooling the sensor because it's open. So I just put it at 4.93 kilo ohms and now if I put you on the scope. So I turn the fan on, red drops to ground. Now when I turn the AC switch on, the blue drops to ground. Okay, and I know you guys can't hear it, but the compressor just came on. That's AC off, that's fan off. And really, this is what I did. I just set this thing to about 4.9 kilo ohms, put it in the harness here because this sensor's open. And now that the inputs are happy here, it's dropping everything to ground. Right there. And now my AC works. Got to show you guys the scan tool. So uh, right now the fan signal is on, and now I'm going to push the air conditioning switch on. See how everything went on, and now you can see my compressor's on, so my voltage is going up because I'm making pressure. Now if I turn it back off, everything goes back to off except for my fan, and now I'll turn it off. So um, yep confirm fix and there's the scan data you guys have a good one